Hello and uh, welcome to the, the latest episode here where I'm back um, with Connor McKenna to discuss the weekend's GAA action. Um, we had all Ireland hurling semi finals. Um, we had Joe McDonough Cup and the Laurie Muir Cup final. So um, we'll start off obviously with um, a game that I didn't actually get to see a lot of, but that many people tell me was the game of the weekend was the um, Kilkenny and Waterford one. Um, so did you catch the game yourself, Connor? And, and how did you? What did you make of it? Yeah, no, I saw every second of it, Jerry. I wouldn't miss it for the world, to be honest with you. But it was um, it was fabulous stuff. It was all that's good about the game. We were looking at two very good teams set up the right way, playing proper, honest hurling. You know, it was seemed it was a great game of hurling. It was kind of like the old Waterford and Kilkenny games we used to have years ago. Like Waterford, really back to the road. Usual says that they were maybe I suppose in the noughties up to maybe two thousand. And, I mean, the Waterford team from 2002 to 2007, maybe it was kind of real off the cuff, natural hurlers. And I suppose just looking at it there, like Kenny in the first half, they were seven points up at half time, they were nine points up at one stage, they probably should have been further up at half time. They didn't take the chances in the first half, really. Waterford didn't really come out with the tracks in the first half, but by God, the second half they really came out. And they, I suppose the water break probably came at the wrong time for Waterford, they had completely with momentum, but. I think from there they kind of pushed on and won the game completely. But it was a really, really, really good display from Waterford. Like the likes of Jack Fagan really stood out the Mead man playing for Waterford Austin Gleason. He was poor in the first half. God, he really came into his own in the second half. Uh, Shane. Stephen Bennett had a great game for Waterford as well. The man of the match, I always get those. I've mixed up him and his brother. But I think if you look at it, it was really a coming coming of age performance for this Waterford team. They had beaten they beaten Cork now beaten Clear and now they've beaten Kilkenny like so. They're going into their first All Ireland final since 2017 now in, in two weeks' time. And I just think that Liam Cahill has come in. He's done a super job. But I'm just going to touch Jerry very briefly. Very, very disappointing for Kilkenny. And we could be seeing the end of a great team here, potentially. You know, that kind of way, I suppose, now five years since they've won the All Ireland. But like, it was just like, if you look at the last year against Limerick, they were nine points up at one stage. They won by a point in the semi final. Limerick were a dodgy umpire decision away from getting 65, which probably would have leveled the game. Limerick probably like that, but that was a nine point league Kenny did slip. Now they did win the match, so it didn't really get touched upon. If you look at when they played Dublin this year in the Leicester Championship, they were sixteen points up. Dublin got back to level with twenty two minutes left or so. Again, Kenny went on, won the match, didn't really get touched upon, but they were nine points up here and they let the they let the league slip. So it's kind of becoming a, a not so nice common trend for Kenny. But if you look at that team, Richie Hogan and TJ Reid are like Richie Hogan, I think is is thirty three going thirty four. TJ Reid is 33 now that he's not showing any signs of getting any worse. But Colin Fendi is 31. Like a lot of those key Kilkenny players, Jerry, are, are the wrong side of 30. And like, I don't know if a few of those are retired, like, have they as many lads coming through as they should have really to, to be as strong a team and, and as, as other years. So, like, Brian Cody, what a job he's done, what an inspirational character, like, for the GEA generally. But I wonder this might be as good a time as any to call it a day. Yeah, I was, I was just going to actually ask you about Cody. Um, obviously, I think is it twenty two years he's been in charge, and uh, obviously we've seen uh, we've seen Mickey Hart um, moving on from Tyrone. Could, could you see um, potentially Cody moving on from Kilkenny? What is it? What is his contract situation at the moment? I don't know, Jerry. It's, it's very hard to get information down how with Kilkenny. They don't really let any of that stuff really leak out, but he seems to be ratified every year in November for another year, and he has absolutely mad energy to go and manage Kilkenny and. One thing I will say, Jerry, though, I don't think that they, that he's holding them back at all. I actually think he's getting the very, very most out with this team. I don't think this Kenny team is fantastic, to be honest with you. I don't think in terms of players, it's as good as anywhere near as strong as the Ricky Kenny team. I think to win a Leinster title this year and get the All-Ireland final last year is an absolutely superb achievement. And I just think this might be a good time for, as any for Cody to go, I suppose. He's not getting any younger. There's a bit of uncertainty at the moment around next year's championship, what the day dates and schedule and everything with the whole pandemic situation. Right? So it might be a good way to go out, Jerry, having one less right at this stage. I think, you know, that kind of way, it might be it might be a way to end on a high because like, they've gone five years now without another Ireland. Like, probably this team, it's hardish to see them winning another another Ireland in the next couple of years. So it might be a good time for Cody to, to call it a day. Okay, so um, the other uh, the other semi final, and we already had um, Waterford in representing uh, Munster in the the All Ireland final. So we got the the yesterday Limerick and Galway, which was obviously you know on paper it looked like a fantastic game. Um, Galway got off to a great start, and then Limerick slowly sort of got them back, and then Galway got back into it, and then Limerick went away again. Um, so were you surprised to see um, the game as tight as it was, or did you was was it? Oops, Certainly, in the end, like like I would have expected, but what did you think yourself? I thought it was a very good game, Jerry. I thought it was 
intense. I thought the quality was, was on display. I think the better team won the game. I think the months, only one of the last eight Munster champions before yesterday have won their retrospective semi final. So I think this was a very, very big game for Limerick to win. And I think it was all for Limerick yesterday was really about getting over the line. And that's what they did. I don't think that they're getting that they're getting a bit a wee bit of criticism. They didn't do this. They weren't impressive. They're not maybe firing all cylinders. I think it's it's a bit of baloney, Jerry, to be honest with you. Because if you look at last year, they were playing brilliant hurling in the league in Munster, and then they kind of got caught against Kilkenny. So this year, while they may not be firing as strong, which I don't believe that I think they are actually going very, very well, but they're in another another All Ireland final, and that's the only place that they really want to be at the moment, I suppose. And, if you look at the team yesterday, Rod Hegarty really sort of had a great game. Tom Morrissey had a great game. Keane Lynch was solid. The half forward line, very good. Kyle Hayes, excellent around half back line. Jeremy Burns had a great game. And I just think Jerry did an absolutely so, there's so much talent in that Limerick team. Nicky Quaid, I thought, was excellent in the goal. Map. I just think that they really, really have excellent talent. I think Galway are a very, very strong side too. And I think Galway were very unlucky yesterday. I think Porrick Mannion went off injured as a mass, massive, or Kyle Mannion was one of those that went, whoever went off injured, one of those Mannion had it was, was a massive loss. And, and I think then that. If you look at it as well, Jerry, that Joe Canning got off injured is probably ten minutes left. Then, like the last ten minutes, if you have Joe Canning, nine ten minutes left, you have a great chance go of, of winning the game. But I think Limerick, they were five points up and late on, and Galway got five points in a row to get back to level. And I think the game was in the melting pot then, very very much. And I think the Galway goalie, he was getting a bit of criticism, but I think he had a good game yesterday. He made a few good saves, and okay, the puckouts maybe weren't great, but was it all his fault? Probably not. Like you know, that's puckout strategy. Do these things happen? I thought. Aidan Murphy had a very good game in the goals for Galway, actually. But I do think, Jerry, that when like everything was kind of going against Limerick yesterday and they kind of went on and they won the game, so they kind of showed their composure towards the end. Now, they're not getting goals, maybe so, but Galway's ended up with an extra man in the, in the defence, you know, that kind of way. So it's hard to break that down. Like, 27 points is good scoring, and I think John Kiley would be very, very pleased yesterday. Now, I have to say, and it goes back to the use of technology in the GA, Jerry. Now, Limerick could have had two red cards yesterday. Like, what, did you see them yourself? Um. Yeah, there was definitely. I remember. I seen the one. I remember the one in the first half because I remember thinking, um, was it Shefflin says that he didn't think it was a, he didn't think it was a red. Um. But yeah. So again, the um, you know, the rules are kind of sometimes some of these. There's. I just think there's too many cards. The like yellow, black, and red. It just. I think it complicates things. Yeah. But if you look, Jerry, like the road Higgerty, that was that was probably the one you're talking about there, Henry Shefflin, like. Like, if that was going to a VAR, a potential or a TMO, would just say to use rugby and, and soccer term, terminology, like, was, like, it could be argued it was dangerous use of a hurl. Now, it would have been a soft red card, definitely. But Aaron Galan also, I think he tapped the goalkeeper on the back in, in the in the first half as well. You know, I think that was ca- captured by the TV on replays. And again, that ten- potentially could have been looked at as potentially. Like, like, I think both of those, if they were red cards, Jerry, they would have been very, very harsh, to be honest with you. But I think they're definitely both yellow cards. Like neither of them got a yellow card for this. I think Hegarty's one definitely was a yellow card. I think Aaron Gallant was very, very harmed. There was one of those probably. There was no need to do with Jerry to, to tap the goalkeeper like that on on, on the back with the hurl. You know, it's 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 you know what it does. It's it creates problems. It creates a debate, and it gives the referee a decision to make. You know that kind of way. Like, and I do think though that they, they would have been soft um, yellow cards or soft red cards even if they had got it, Jerry. You know that kind of way. But I do think that the VAR would be in addition to um to, to GA, to be honest. I think that the clear and obvious are, I think there's no harm in having a look. I think the Gaelic football and hurling are much more black and white than soccer in terms of, of rules. Rugby is probably similar to, to that as well, and the rules are quite black and white. And I, I do think it would be it would be in addition to the Gaelic. I think there's definitely, at, I think we're definitely at a stage now where there's time to have a debate on whether or not VAR would, would, be, would be good in the games. Okay, um, so obviously um, we're set up now. The All Ireland final is Waterford and Limerick, uh, which is a repeat of the uh, the Munster final this year, which um, obviously Limerick came out on top of. Um, what? Uh, how do you see? Like, do you think that will have much bearing on the final, or do you think just it's a completely different day, a new game? I think it's a completely different game, Jerry. To be honest with you, but. I suppose the fact that it was a Munster final a few weeks ago has to have some sort of resemblance. Like it's probably they might set up similarly. The players might be the same on the pitch, so obviously it would have some similarities in that way. But what's more interesting is that, like, if you look at it, this is what I think people need to look at a wee bit more, and it's probably not getting mentioned as much as that. Like, Limerick did beat Waterford in the league this year. They met them fairly well, like, and they absolutely hockeyed them. They met them by twenty points in Walsh Park last year in the Munster Championship, and they met them by eight points, I think, in the league final last year. And also they met them in two thousand and eighteen in the Munster Hurling Championship. So. Limerick definitely have the upper hand over Waterford in recent years. And I, I don't think that, like, like Waterford, I won't say they're getting too much credit for their performance on Saturday night, but 
they're they're really being seen now. People are nearly seeing them as favourites to beat Limerick in the final. I, I I don't think Waterford. I think Waterford were excellent on Saturday. They deserved the plaudits, but I also think Limerick played very well yesterday. I don't think Limerick are getting anywhere near enough credit for how well they've done in recent years. I think the the problem with this Limerick team, I suppose, is not a problem. It's probably a stupid or two, but. In 2018 was kind of the first year on the scene for most of those lads, and they kind of won in All Ireland in their first year, so they kind of won it in their first year on the goal. And because of that, then like last year, they played beautiful hurling. They won the league and they won the they won the Munster Championship, and they got caught against Kilkenny, but like there was a big surprise. But this year they're after winning the league and winning the Munster Championship again. Like so, they're do they've been showing remarkable consistency. I don't think they're getting enough respect, Jerry. Like I, I think. If you look at two years ago when they played Galway in the final, Galway would have gone into the game as favourites and Limerick won the game by a point. And it wasn't, it was probably, I wouldn't say it was a major surprise, but it, Galway would have been expected to win that game. But like yesterday, now people are kind of complaining that Limerick only won by three points. But I know personally, I thought Limerick played very good hurling yesterday. I think they have some super hurdles. I mentioned the last there who were, who were excellent hurdles around the park. But there's not really a weak link in this Limerick team. And that's what I think is probably the most important thing. And I, I, I do think that at the moment, that they definitely have the upper hand over Waterford going into the final. Yeah, well, I, think I would, I would definitely, I would have to agree with that. Like, obviously, you know, I've been sort of saying about Limerick all the way through, and like, um, like ultimately, in all the games that they played, they haven't necessarily really had a, glo- a glove laid on them. Um, Galway certainly, like in the last, um, they got this stage yesterday where like Galway got right back into it, got level, but then Limerick upped it again, and ju- you know, they just seemed to have gears to go through. Um, they also won the national league. They won the monster, the monster championship. You know, like. They're just consistently winning everything that they've they've been put in front of them this year. So, you know, I think there's um, there's no reason why they they shouldn't be the favourites to to win it. And I think in the league as well, like they kind of won. I think they won every game in the group in the league this year. Like so, they kind of didn't really win the league by fluke. They kind of won it on merit. And I, I I you know I, I just think they're in they're in a really really good place at the moment. And going into the last round of the going into the All Ireland final, I'm very to be honest, and I just do think that like that. Kind of, as I said, the first year kind of they came and they won it. But Waterford, the, the core of this Waterford team, I suppose, is one very, very good All Ireland with a minor team, which came then to win the under twenty one, the same group that won the under twenty one. I think it was two thousand thirteen and two thousand sixteen in those years. And Liam Cattle is an excellent coach, and I think that the, there's a pity, Jerry. This is probably really where we're missing the fans, isn't it? Because there would have been a real buzz around Crow Park, especially after the Waterford win on on Sunday evening. And like to be honest, or Saturday evening, even, but like. Limerick bring a massive support too, like so. This really would be a final to collect for for the neutral. I don't think the D sides have ever met in a final. I think it's the first all Munster final since nineteen ninety seven, and it's also it's the second time only since nineteen ninety seven. This will be that a team other than Galway or Kilkenny or two teams that like that Galway and Kilkenny haven't been involved in the final. I think Clare and Cork in two thousand and thirteen was the only other game that we haven't seen a Galway or Kilkenny play play in the final since ninety seven. Like so. Yeah, no, it, it, it's going to be a very, very good final. I think that probably the two best teams of the championship are, are in the final. They've both, Waterford have lost one game, Limerick haven't lost any game, but Waterford are in the final and Merritt there for absolutely for definite. And I think they've kind of been going in, when they play Cork that game, they went in as outsiders, they won that game, it kind of gave them a wee bit of belief, kind of, and against Limerick they were outsiders, but they put in a very good show that day. And against them, um, against them, um, Clare they were favourites. They won fairly good, and against the Kennedy outsiders, and they've won. So Limerick have kind of been favourites every game to be favourites again. But no, I think Limerick. I, I do think Limerick are just slightly. Do, oh, the the momentum, not momentum, but the advantage is slightly with Limerick ahead of the final. Okay, um. So moving on then uh, to the Joe McDonough Cup. Um, Antrim were were in a good position going into this weekend's games and. In the end, they, they won comfortably and Carlo lost an area. Um, so I did I did watch a good bit of the, the Meath and Antrim game. Did you see any of those uh, Joe McDonough Cup games yourself? I was I was watching a small bit of the of the of the of the Antrim and Meath game and uh, yeah, Antrim it was a very, very good performance from Darren Peace inside. It was kind of you know, Baron America they were gonna be in the final anyway, but they used it as just to be mathematically sure and to to um to have a good preparation ahead of the final and yeah they're in a very very good place and just touching the other game they West me Beth Carlos but there's no story from the game apart from I want to just say Owen Price and Brendan Murta retired from West Mead heard an after the match they're two West Mead best ever heard of I'd almost say two very long servants and just want to wish both of those as it was well Murta had retired in 2017 but he came back for one kind of last hurrah this year with the short season ahead of the joint on the cup but Owen Price is another very underrated hurler and Amongst the best West Mead ever produced, so that they'd be a big loss. And it's but one more thing is that Colin Bonner 
stepped down as manager of Carlo after the game and he did an excellent job with Carlo as well. So that's probably the only thing you can take from that game. I suppose Westmead won the match, but it was a terrible match really for Westmead and Carlo. I thought it might have been a big match for Carlo. If they had beaten Kerry, if they were a draw with Kerry, they, they would have probably had to win this match to get to the final maybe. So it might have had a big, wee bit of added significance, but no, they didn't have to do that anyway. So yeah, Westmead just got over the line and I suppose we can move on to 2021. But yeah, Antrim and Kerry should be should be an excellent final in a way, Jerry, for them. Um, they they just t- touched on the Antrim game. I'll say it was um for maybe about twenty five to thirty minutes. It, lo- it looked like a really tight game, and and Meath were Meath were on top and and playing well. And then Antrim sort of the endless the first half Antrim took over, and then I think for like maybe twenty five minutes into the second half, um, Meath only scored. They scored a goal. And Andrew must have put on maybe fifteen points or something, you know, in, in that time, and and ended up on I think it was seventeen points in the end. Um, but it was a good a good performance. I think um, Michael Bradley had eight points from play, I think, for Andrew, um, which was obviously a very very good return. And uh, just um, before we leave the the Joe McDonough, then Andrew obviously this season have had Kerry's number. Um, they've played. I think the the final of this competition will be their first meeting this year. They played in the league before COVID. Then they played in the league final, and then they played in this competition in Antrim on the mall. Um, do you see that having any impact on the on the final itself? I don't really, Jerry. To be honest with you, I just don't think the circumstances are, are applicable. To be honest, you know, I think the only game we could really compare it to was the match in Tullamore in the league final. But even like to be honest, Jerry, like, if you look like when Kerry played Antrim in the in the league. Kerry had cases of mumps, I think, so they were missing some of their best players. And when they played in the league, I think Antrim might have had a few COVID lads missing, and even Manus got injured. Like, and then up in the Joe McDonough, I suppose, was very relevant. But like that was up at Antrim and home advantage. I, I do think that it's probably relevant. Antrim definitely have the upper hand. They bet them fairly well last year in, in Dunloy in the Joe McDonough Cup. So uh, momentum is with Antrim, but it would be no surprise whatsoever if Kerry won the game, if you know what I mean. I, I think that Antrim, probably on paper at the moment, they're, they're probably four or five points a better team than Kerry, but. I think they'd absolutely be in no position to be overcome for their taking for granted. I, I think it wouldn't be a surprise either if Kerry were to win this game. Jerry, to be it's probably similar in some ways to Limerick and Waterford in their game, really, where momentum is probably with like Antrim probably are the ones under pressure, a bit of expectation on them. But I actually do think Jerry, though, that it's very important for either team to win this game. But I think it's important while they have the chance to get up to Liam McCarthy to kind of take that. The but it's probably slightly more important for Kerry because. The way it works normally is that Kerry have to win. It's very unfair in the match. If they win a Joe McDonough Cup, they have to play the team that comes bottom of the round robin Munster Championship in a playoff match, kind of a promotion or a game playoff. But this year, if they win, they're going to go straight into the Leinster Championship. Now, it doesn't really make sense to me, to be honest with you, how they can like be allowed. Like, it's a stupid rule. It's discriminatory against Kerry, actually, in Munster, to be honest with you. But I suppose that's the way That's the way they, they do these things. They don't really... Sometimes it's hard to see. Like weaker counties often don't get these decisions in their favour. But I suppose that um, Antrim and Kerry, yeah, it, it, Antrim, if they had to win this, it would top up and absolutely perfect to win the league and, and stop it up for Joe McDonough. Tell me, see, um, obviously the winners of this gets promoted and it basically goes into the Leinster, the Leinster Championship next year. What, what is somebody getting relegated out of Leinster then? If they're actually changing the form of the 16 Leinster Championship next year, so there's going to be six teams in the round robin. But to be honest with you, Jerry, I think like it's it just with the whole COVID thing. I don't know that any if any this is absolutely certain or definite. As far as I'm aware, the hurling is fairly fairly sure how they're going to go ahead. But we don't know when these matches are going to be. But I think what they propose to do is to kind of change, slightly change the structures of the competitions next year so there'll be six teams in the Leinster Championship. So that hence why there was no relegation this year from the Leinster and, and hurling. So then, with that, me that would basically leave it then where there's going to be six and. Leinster and five and Munster, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I don't know now how they're going to structure with All Ireland quarterfinals or whatever or qualifying, but that's that that that's currently what's what's on the cards. But that was on the cards anyway before the whole COVID thing kicked kicked in. To be honest, so that's what they're going to probably do. And it's going to be six teams in the Joe McDonough as well. So obviously, Antrim and Kerry won't be there next year, and then there's the four that's there this year, and then the two teams going from the or the two Chris Ring finals will also be in the Joe McDonough Cup again again next year. Down in uh, down in Kildare, um, they were so. It just it just seems daft for like the fact that if Kerry goes into the Leinster Championship, like if one of them's going to have six, and the other one's going to have five. Why does it matter that they have to go into? You know, why can it not be a six-team Leinster Championship instead of a five? But I'm sure somebody has uh, 
a reason for it, probably economic as well. Um, but uh, the Munster County Ferry is quite safe for you. I don't think you don't really like it being tampered with, you know, that kind of uh, yeah. But if you look at the Leinster Championship, it's quite remarkable. Like in the recent years, since 2015, they've had teams from Munster, Connacht, Ulster, and Leinster play in the competition. Like Kerry have played in it, Galway have played in it, Antrim have played in it, and obviously the Leinster teams. But the Munster Championship hasn't had anything like that at all. It's only been the five Munster teams. And I, 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 I do think it's like, you know, and Kerry under years, like, like they, they could. I suppose, Jerry, that the thing for Kerry is they have to win the jump to the first before they start winning with that. And if the Tesla answer, it'll be. But I do think, though, that for Kerry, like, they, I, I do think they have very good underage coming. And I do think they will win a jump in a cup, whether it's this year, especially with noting one down, they will win it eventually. And I think then that's when we're really going to see the debate on is how is it fair that Kerry don't, don't have a chance to read the next level. Okay, um, so the the last sort of the match to match to talk about, um, I did, did watch a good bit of it. I don't know whether you seen it yourself. Was the um, Laurie Meyer Cup final? Did you catch any of it at all? I didn't see it, Jerry. To be honest with you, I, did. I missed that game on Saturday, but it was on. Just I so I don't want to go too deep in as when I wasn't watching the match. But Lau Lau was a very good win for Lau. But I do think this has to be put into perspective, Jerry. Like there was a three team competition, like so. I, I don't want to be disrespectful, but like they're beaten for man and cap, and like so, it, it's kind of. I don't think that the achievements are absolutely flabbergasting, to be honest with you. You know, that kind of way. Now, whether for from a loud hurling perspective, that's not to take anything away. It's great that these guys can win a competition, but it is the fifth tier journey at the moment. You know, that kind of way. So, I don't want to. I, I do think loud did very well to win, but I don't want probably to to override their achievements, which is fair enough. So, I think loud did understand that as well. Like you know, but they they were in the rapid finals in the past, and the challenge for loud, I suppose, now is to. Cement their place as a new record team and maybe try and go to that level where they get into finals again. Well, it'll be interesting to see if um, if there's any you know ambition in the the county board. They've obviously put um, a lot of eggs into the football this year. We we make your heart coming in, so it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, you know there's not going to be any movement in the management. You know if they've had a successful year and what they're doing, but you know it'd be good to see if they did um, they didn't in, in, invest in it. But in the game itself. Um, Louth always looked like they were going to win it. Um, they kind of, for Manic got this stage, they were about four points behind and they had a couple of chances and they went wide on the same post every time. And uh, then Louth kind of got uh, got themselves back into gear and, and moved away and won comfortably in the end. So obviously they will go up to the Nicky Ragger and as you say, um, they've been there before. Um, they were in it. Uh, I think they, they last won this competition in 2016. And had maintained their, their position in it, you know, for the last three or four years. So they'll be glad to go straight back up. So um, obviously that was a, a good uh, a good day for for Louth, and uh, they'll have uh, plenty to look forward to in the hurling as well as uh, as well as the football as well. So um, we have no uh, we had no football matches this week. So um, we uh, we did touch on some of the managerial changes and stuff last week. So. Um, you can obviously, you know, go back through the, the older videos and see those. Um, but uh, we will be back later in the week then with the All Ireland uh, semi finals, um, in the football. So um, there'll obviously be plenty to, to discuss there ahead of um, two big games. But uh, my thanks as always to Connor for coming on and uh, discussing the discussing the hurling. And uh, as I say, we'll be back Thursday or Friday with. Um, with the uh, football preview for the for the week ahead. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you soon.